America's at its lowest point. Mika Brzezinski drew pushback from even morning Joe co-host and Bojo Scarborough on Friday when she said the country was at a low point in American history, possibly on par with the Civil War or Great Depression. In the wake of discussion of President Donald Trump's response to the Barcelona terrorist attack that included tweeting a myth about General John Pershing's handling of Islamic terrorists, the panel delved into Trump's soft repeated rhetoric that he could be the most presidential president since Abraham Lincoln. It seems that we're at a low point in American history, Brzezinski said, preparing to tease the next segment. Well, the Civil War was probably a little worse, Scarborough said cutting over her. That was bad. Well, I'm worried about what's coming, Brzezinski said, looking rueful. Great Depression, pretty bad, Scarborough said. That was probably worse. This is a pretty low point, Brzezinski said. Indeed, the Civil War was the deadliest armed conflict in the country's history, and the Great Depression saw the unemployment rate rise to as high as 25 percent. She eventually said, how about this? We're at a low point in presidential history. The hosts of Morning Joe, once friendly with Trump, have become two of his most fervent critics, at points even questioning his mental fitness for office. Trump set off a media firestorm in June when he tweeted personal attacks at the You've heard liberals compare Trump to Hitler. So we asked a woman who was born in Nazi Germany. A popular talking point on the left is that Donald Trump has things in common with Hitler. But is this the case? Independent Journal Review decided to speak to a woman born in Nazi Germany about the comparison. We talked with Marian Ingeborg Andrews, who goes by Inga. She was born in Dusseldorf, Germany, in 1940 during Hitler's reign. While most kids were playing with friends, Andrews was hiding in air raid shelters and helping to clean up the rubble from destroyed buildings to rebuild her city. Andrews said, What is going on in this country is giving me chills. Trump is not like Hitler. Just because a leader once order doesn't mean they're like a dictator. What reminds me more of Hitler than anything else isn't Trump, it's the destruction of freedom of speech on the college campuses, the agendas fueled by the professors. That's how Hitler started. He pulled in the youth to miseducate them, to brainwash them, it's happening today. Andrews drove home her point further for the younger generation, it saddens me that we are teaching garbage in the schools and in the college. We don't teach history anymore. History repeats itself over and over. The kids out there today haven't ever lived through a war like I did. I remember sitting in a rock pile, cleaning rocks, to rebuild Germany. I remember eating maple leaves and grass to survive. She later made it to the U.S. when her mother married an American, but her journey wasn't without hurdles. It took six years because she had worked in Germany. It took six years to clear her to be able to be married. Then when you married an American, because we were the enemy, you had to wait. We had to go from Heidelberg to Bremerhaven where another camp was. This camp was run by the U.S. military. They vetted us in both places. There were all these German brides with their children and families who had to be vetted again for three of four days before they could get on the ship. The ship we took was the USS Washington. We arrived in New York in March of 1953. My mother, met a Weinbach, and I still had the last name Muller. So we had a vetting process like what we are going through now because you have to have this to make the country safe. Then Andrews had some choice words for the protesters in the streets destroying property, America needs to grow up. The young people who are rioting and destroying property, who have no respect for elders and freedom of speech, I was so proud to become a citizen of this country. She opened up about how she accepted American culture and values, Andrews continued on about her desire to become an American, at school. They put me in first grade even though I was a teenager because I didn't speak English. The teachers would take time at their lunchtime to teach us how to speak English. But they came to find out that I was hiding in the bathroom stall with my legs up eating my bra yun swayager and onion sandwich, so nobody would talk to me. Still, I had a burning desire to be an American. I went to night school to learn English. I would practice English without a German accent. I didn't want to be German. 
I wanted to be an American. When I was 14, I was working in a drugstore reading comic books. Through reading comic books, I developed my English skills. We would go to the malls and we wouldn't speak our foreign language, we would speak English. Because we believed we needed to honor the country that opened its doors for us. It was rude to do otherwise. Andrews returned to the present day with a message for those attacking freedom of speech, professors shouldn't be telling their students to go after freedom of speech. They should be telling them that this is the greatest country in the world. The demonstrators can't tell you why they're demonstrating. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I just want the country to be at peace. I see what is happening here reflecting some of the things we saw in Germany, and it's terrifying. It's sad. But it's not because of Trump. It's because of poor education. Trump is not like Hitler. The theory that he is is propaganda. Yes, I lived through some of Nazi Germany, but all you have to do is read some books about that period to see how wrong that theory is. She finished by sharing a personal story. I had an aunt who was in the Olympics. My aunt got all this extra stuff from Hitler and was surrounded by this propaganda, she said, before explaining how she couldn't keep a relationship with her aunt. I couldn't have anything to do with her. Even after the war, she was calling the Jewish people, of whom I was friends with, dirty Jews. My point in saying all this is that if people aren't able to see outside of one world view, that's what happens, Andrews concluded. They buy the propaganda. And that's what is happening today. And if people aren't educated properly and given the ability to think freely, we will repeat that history. Due to numerous inquiries into the authenticity of Inga's story, she's provided independent journal review with several pieces of proof to back up her claims. Her mother, Meta Weinbach's passport, evidence of their time in Heidelberg, Inga with her father Heinz Muller during World War II. Upon sending these pieces of proof to back up her story, Andrews told us, it's exactly what I've been saying. Some people want to see through one world view, so they couldn't even believe the story I Sheriff just dropped a whopping two times four of reality on Sanctuary California, illegals are raging. The issue of sanctuary cities has been extremely polarizing for many parts of the country, as those liberal state and local officials who sympathize with illegal immigrants, who are here in violation of federal immigration laws, have vowed to refuse to enforce them and not cooperate with Trump's crackdown on illegals with criminal records. There are those areas of the country where illegal immigration has become a serious, life-threatening problem for Americans living along the borders or American citizens who end up being the victim of a violent crime committed by an illegal immigrant, which happens quite often. One California sheriff, Donnie Youngblood, has stated his county of Kern will be a law and order county and he is asking the Kern Board of Supervisors to pass a resolution declaring as much, so that he and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officers will be able to do their jobs without interference from city officials who sympathize with illegals. From right-wing news, the sheriff has called for agents to be able to proceed with distinguishing and locating felonious illegal immigrants in the county jails who as soon as they are released, will be taken into custody and deported immediately, unlike what has been happening in many California jurisdictions, with local officials hiding them and not informing ICE agents of their release. Youngblood realized that Californian lawmakers were actively working against him and his efforts to secure his county and keep California citizens safe, so he thought it was time to make his proposition for the law and order resolution. He called the move somewhat symbolic. Sheriff's deputies don't enforce immigration laws and we don't go on federal immigration sweeps, but we do have to allow our federal partners to do their job. It was only three years prior that this sheriff and armed forces veterans refused to comply with the California Trust Act, which limited cooperation between local law enforcement officials and ICE agents. He also declined to sign paperwork for a federal immigration program that would act as a shield for illegal immigrants and keep them protected and in country. This sheriff is one of the few people who gets it. Not only does he understand that illegal immigration has gotten out of control, 
but it is his job as a sworn law enforcement officer to cooperate with federal immigration laws that protect America from invasion by people who are coming here to take advantage of America's generosity and goodwill, commit crimes or in some cases to wage a war of terrorism against us. America needs more of the likes of Sheriff Youngblood who realize the dangers confronting us and the need to minimize them forcefully, if necessary. Report WikiLeaks exposes six top Republicans bribed by Clinton to destroy Trump. Let's not forget, the deep state has infiltrated the Republican Party and is out to get President Trump. WikiLeaks revealed in December what we've all been saying for some time now, the GOP is full of traitors and Clinton cronies, and they've been working day and night to ruin President Trump. Paul Ryan, Carly Fiorina, John Kosich, Lindsey Graham and John McCain were all named in the latest WikiLeaks release, and apparently were in the tank to not only ensure Trump lost the election, but to undermine him if he won, and that's exactly what they're doing. This is a clear-cut case of treason and should be treated as such. These traitors should be immediately rounded up and removed from office, the sheer audacity and treacherous nature of these wretched people is almost unfathomable. From your newswire in an email from John Podesta to Huma Abn, the pair discussed diverting Clinton campaign funds to various Republicans who were secretly on the Clinton payroll. ConservativeDailyPost.com reports, the email, sent in July of this year, describes how funds were being diverted from Clinton's campaign to the super PACs of Jeb Bush, Carly Fiorina, and John Kosich. According to the email, J.B. C.F. And JK PACs will be noticeably silent for the rest of the campaign. Each will receive a significant allowance from advertising budget. HRC is in the loop and has talked to all three personally. Eyes only. Other emails that surfaced but do not refer to anything other than title have also surfaced that raised eyebrows. It seems at a glance that the Clinton Foundation, or as I am calling it, the Pantsuit Mafia has bought off several key members of the Republican Party to push the Clinton agenda. Such as, he is on board, will retract the invitation to speak. Eyes only. This email was dated days before Speaker of the House Paul Ryan withdrew the invitation to Donald Trump to speak at an event in Wisconsin. Even though we do not have the smoking gun to say it was him, no other logical conclusion can be assumed. Other emails hint at the money being moved to Republican elected officials in the House and Senate. For instance FEG reports shows that two large donations from PACs and private sources lay in early October went to John McCain right after he attacked Trump publicly criticized Trump. That happened shortly after a slew of emails concerning moving money to support one candidate and move support from another. Shortly thereafter, his challenger in this tight race, Kirkpatrick, lost several key donors and money and support lesson from the DNC and the DSCC in the last few weeks of the race. The thing to note is that McCain is one of the lead sponsors of a committee to investigate any Russian influence into the election. Senator Lindsey Graham, another outspoken critic of Donald Trump and briefly candidate for president from July to December also it seems received help from the Clintons. An email that simply states, cleared the road for him in 2020 could mean that there will be no strong or supported Democrat in the South Carolina Senate race when Graham is up for re-election. As with McCain, Graham has publicly called for a look into the Russian influence in the election. There were a lot of politicians who were opposed to Donald Trump. These, in particular, all share a common bond, however, Trump humiliated them on stage in front of hundreds of millions of people around the world. This is more than just politics or conscientious objecting, this was revenge. Not just revenge. This is out and out treason. Our representatives took an oath to support our Constitution and its laws for our benefit, not theirs. This is why gridlock is prevalent in D.C. The treachery and the corruption are on both sides of the coin. Unfortunately, there is no way of knowing who the true Republicans are and who are the ones that are fronts for the Clinton machine the Pantsuit Mafia. The number of emails is too overwhelming to easily sift through them all to find all of the turncoat rhinos. We must be diligent to ferret out those that have sold their souls for power. The only hope that we have for transparency of the Clintons anytime soon rests in an audit carried out by the IRS. Behold!
In recent days, there is a call to impeach the commissioner of the IRS. Interesting times we live in to be sure. Only time and work on our part will push this audit forward. Even though Hillary lost the presidency, she is still a power behind the scenes with these revelations. With her Democratic allies in Pelosi and Schumer and her Republican lackeys in the form of Ryan and other Republicans, she will set the agenda and pull the strings. We the people will have no idea who is on our side and who is not. For the Clintons, it will mean that even though the American people are supporting Trump and making America great again, they will set the agenda. We will be left scratching our heads and wondering how the GOP and Trump cannot accomplish anything. Clinton will be in control without having to ever show her hand or be responsible to the people. The source Clinton team will have killed the republic and we will never know until it is too late. This Russian news story perhaps is the ultimate coup for the Clinton camp. She does not even have to be the winner of the electoral college vote to have gained power. Should enough electors defect to Hillary or name another candidate in their votes, electors are not legally bound to vote for their candidate then that could throw the vote into the House and Senate. The suspicious part of this simply is this, on January 20 a new president will be inaugurated. The Constitution in the 25th Amendment spells out the line of succession if there is still not a picked president, the vice president shall become president, Kane or Pence. If the Senate has not picked a vice president by noon on the 20th, the Speaker of the House shall become president. Coincidence the Roman Republic lasted for centuries in the hands of the people before falling to become the Roman Empire. That change did not happen by foreign invasion or foreign intrigue. No barbarian or forceful enemy defeated that republic over 2,000 years ago. It was defeated from the inside by the treachery of the Senate and the blood of the slain Julius Caesar. Just as Caesar was stabbed in the back by men he thought were his allies, Trump is facing the same treachery. In the coming days and months, without our help and diligence, President Trump may also be gasping. At 2. Boston Free Speech Rally Disbanded After Thousands of Leftists Counter Protest A free speech rally taking place in Boston, Massachusetts on Saturday was disbanded after thousands of left wing activists held an enormous counter protest. No more than 300 free speech activists took part in the event, while approximately 30,000 counter protesters took to the streets in a protest organized by groups such as Black Lives Matter and Boston's Answer Coalition. The rally was organized by a group known as the Boston Free Speech Coalition and invited libertarians, conservatives, traditionalists, classical liberals, Donald, Trump supporters, or anyone else who enjoys their right to free speech. It was also addressed by Republican Senate candidate Shiva Adrai and Libertarian congressional candidate Samson Rachopi, as counter-protesters sang songs comparing the participants to Nazis and white supremacists. In the run-up to the event, the group behind the rally fully distanced itself from the events in Charlottesville last weekend, after violence broke out between a white supremacist rally and Antifa. Contrary to a lot of the rumors out there, the purpose of the rally is to denounce the kind of political violence that we have seen, a sort of rising tide throughout the country, and particularly most recently in Charlottesville, organizer John Medla told CNN affiliate WBs. Kemma reads Trump supporters' social media posts attacking him for criticizing president, video. Jimmy Kimmel on his show Wednesday read out social media posts from Donald Trump supporters who lambasted the late-night host for attacking the president's response to the violence in Charlottesville, VA. The ABC late-night comedian read tweets and Facebook posts that castigated his previous night's monologue, calling them thoughtful responses. Kimmel on Tuesday gave a political monologue in which he spoke directly to those who voted for Trump saying they needed to realize they made a mistake. But you've been trying to ignore it, because you don't want to admit to these smug, annoying liberals that they were right," Kimmel said on air Tuesday. That's the last thing you want to do. But the truth is, deep down inside, you know you made a mistake. People irate with Kimmel's remarks took to Twitter and Facebook to express their discontent with the comedian, The Hill reported. Jimmy give me a break Jimmy. 
Nobody cares what you think you sound like a whining baby does baby Jimmy want his bottle? One Twitter user wrote. Another Twitter user told Kimmel to move to another country and that if he does not like Trump, he should stop crying on TV Snowflake. Kimmel then said that he enjoyed Facebook posts more because people had to attach their real name to what they wrote. Jimmy Kimmel is the worst talk show host and most stupid person I have ever seen, a Facebook user wrote. I watched President Trump today and stupid Kimmel took what President Trump said all wrong and is turning it around to hurt Trump. Stupid Kimmel as far as I am concerned is a racist and is promoting racism. His sorry ass show needs to be cancelled. Jimmy Kimmel reminds me of demented little kid at the social gathering. Where in the hell is this kid's parents? They should be arrested for giving birth to him, another Facebook post.